Hey there everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial and today I'm very excited to say that Loops, the thing I've been begging for with my mouth foaming for months, is finally a thing in geometry nodes. No, it hasn't been programmed in, but uh, somebody found a little hack, a little workaround uh, to make a dependency loop um, in a sense that makes a functional loop in geometry nodes that updates every frame. Let me show you how to make this. So. Uh, in geometry nodes, I'm going to delete everything, and the weird thing about this is instead of making an object a geometry nodes object, I'm going to make two objects geometry nodes objects. So I have two cubes here. Uh, the first one, you can't see this because of my face, but the first one I'm going to call initial, and the second one I'm going to call loop, and we can hide that. The way that we're going to do a loop, and you can loop anything, do anything with a loop in geometry nodes, is we are going to send information to one object and then back to the other. And it's a circular dependency, but it takes a frame to update, and that creates the loop. Here's how you do it. So in the initial, I'm going to make a geometry nodes um, modifier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, it's going to be a bit strange, but it will make sense once we talk through it. You're going to use a switch node. And this is a result I saw in multiple places on Twitter. You start with your initial thing. So let's say we just have a point. This is just what I want my geometry nodes uh, to be. You connect this to true. So I'm going to have a point starting at four um, height. And you can see here is our point at a height of four. We can change what that height is. <coughs> and what we are going to do is we are going to have the false state be an object info node. And that's going to be referring to the loop. Okay, so when it's true, we have our initial condition. When it's false, and we'll talk about what the switch is, we're going to have our loop. Meanwhile, in our loop object, we are just going to reference this back to itself. What do I mean by that? We're going to set up initial, connect that. So let's think about this logic, especially if I, um, you know, toggle the switch. Initially, uh, the switch is toggled to true, and we have a point coming through. After that point exists, that's going to be our initial condition. I'm going to turn off the switch, okay? And notice that this point is still here because of this dependency graph. When I turn off the switch, this is going to be false, so it's going to look at the loop. But the loop is loading in the initial, which has already had this loaded. Let me, let me uh, show you what to do here. So uh, with the switch, I'm going to use a equal to, and I'm going to ask, is the frame as in literally the frame that we're on, the time, equal to 1, okay? So on the first frame of this uh, animation, you're going to see we're on frame 1. This is going to be equal to 1. This is true. It's going to load in our initial condition. Then on the next frame, so I'm on frame 2 now, uh, this is now going to be false. The frame is not equal to 1. It's 2, and then 3, 4, 5. It's going to load in the loop, which is loading in the initial thing. Um, so when I play this, it's going to look like nothing happens, but we've already set up our loop. And let me show you what we can do with this. So for example, what we can do is we can take our initial condition in every frame, and I want you to think about everything we do in this loop, right? Everything we do here is going to be applied every frame. Every frame, let's move this down by a little. So if this was a normal, a normal graph, it would just move it down once. But now when I click play, you can see it's animating. Again, every frame, it's going to go down by negative 0.1. And I know what you're thinking, big deal, you can already set this up. But um, this is actually profound, because this is actually the key ingredient, this loop, uh, for making physics, for making a whole bunch of stuff. So what about instead instead of a, um, a constant vector, like negative 1, right? So I'm saying go downwards, uh, negative 1 units every frame. What about instead of that? Uh, we have this uh, change over time. Well, we know that a vector is going to give us a velocity downwards because it's updating every time. If we change it over time, we can do an acceleration. Okay, so let me show you an example of how to do that. Um, we'll start simple and then we'll get a bit more complicated. So I'm connecting time. So this is going to increase this, uh, what would be a position vector, but is actually a velocity vector. And you can see now it's falling with gravity. It's speeding up as it falls. Okay, so this is actually the basis of physics. But uh, even more profound than that, we can actually send attributes through this node or through this uh, loop. 
So for example, what I can do is in the initial conditions, we're going to have a point. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to store an attribute to this point. Let's call this G for gravity. Initially, gravity is going to be set to zero. And I'm just going to play this uh, to kind of refresh the memory and all this. What we can do is we can say move this downwards by our named attribute, which is G for gravity. So initially, this is going to be set to zero. What do you expect to happen? It's going to go nowhere. But after each iteration, what we can do is we can update our attribute. So we store named attribute. I'm going to use G. So it's going to take on the value of itself. But I'm going to iterate it. So I'm going to add 0.03. And now when I play this, you can see this thing has gravity again. And this 0.03 is basically saying how fast are we going to what is the magnitude of our acceleration? Okay. So what's happening here, to be perfectly clear, is on frame one, this is true, this uh, switch. So we generate a point with g equal to zero. Then another frame elapses. Now this uh, statement is false. Our loop gets executed. So we're sent over here. Uh, it's going to move by 0 because g is equal to 0, but then it's going to iterate by 0.03, and then each time g is going to increase by 0.03. Um, and another simple thing we can do is we want to say, oh, it shouldn't like go through the floor. And one simple way to do that is to say, oh, you know, uh, recast the position to like uh, z equals, equals its value or 0. So, right? so if it goes negative, you say, oh, just cast it to 0. That's how we traditionally do it. But what we can do here is we can say take g, which is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and um, we can actually cap it at a certain amount. So for example, what I'm saying is if we take the position and we check when is it negative, when are we passing through the floor, right? So if z is going to be less than, so I'm looking at the z component, I'm asking when is this less than zero, in other words, when is it negative? If this is the case, we want to turn gravity off. So what we can do is we can use a mix RGB, so this is our conditional. If this is true that it's less than a zero, or sorry, not 0.5, but less than zero, that means we want our gravity to be this, and if that's not true, just pass through gravity. So let's see what that looks like. So now you can see this is falling until it hits the floor. Now this is profound because this is the same uh, logic you can use to add a normal force and add some bounce and all this. So instead of setting this to zero, I could have set this to like, you know, this isn't going to be exactly a normal force, but I could set it to like negative 0.4, which is going to make it kind of bounce in this way. Um, let's see, I'm going to make it negative one. <laughs> it kind of makes a bit of a dependency loop, as you can tell. Um, but you can tell that it's uh, bouncing now, or it's at least going up and then it's falling faster and faster and faster and faster. I guess um, one thing we can do is we can like cap this to be uh, clamped so it doesn't have uh, uh, weird issues and all this. Um, or what you can do is you can do the evaluation before. Th at this point, I'm just like doing some... Uh, fancy stuff or just like uh, theorizing but uh, what we can do is we can cast this to the value g and then we can just load this in as is so let's see if this is less than zero let's make it like negative 0.5 um, otherwise pass through g and let's see what that looks like so now you can see we have a bit of a bounce so there you go it's going to be set to negative 0.5. A fancy way to do this is you can say uh, this uh, negative 0.5 will change over time. Um, so, the, you know, there's ways to do that. Like, for example, you can uh, take this, uh, you can multiply it by the... Do we want the time? Let's see. So we want this to become closer and closer to zero. So maybe we can divide. So let's see. It's bouncing, and then it's bouncing, and then it's going to lose power over time. At least it should. <laughs> uh, maybe we can uh, make this a uh, quadra inverse quadratic. <laughs> I 
So it bounces high, and then it's going to lose its momentum. And then uh, well, one thing we can do to avoid this uh, glitchiness, by the way, is we can take our value, whatever it is, and have it lose a bit of energy each time. So we multiply this by like 0.98, so it's going to lose 2% of its energy. So you can see it's bouncing, 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 and it's starting to calm down more and more and more. Um, we can also, by the way, do the same multiplication here. So again, this is just theorizing at this point. But you can see, uh, now we have a point, and it's, uh, you know, using the loop to do physics. And you can get way more complicated than this. Um, other than that, uh, that is the big news. We now have a loop way method hack uh, in Blender. And uh, I expect to make a lot more tutorials using this loop, if not a full-fledged physics solver uh, like other people are doing. So uh, thank you for watching this tutorial. Uh, if you found it helpful, great. Uh, the way you can support this channel and the other channel, CG Matter and Default Cube, is via uh, the Patreon. You can get a link to this blend file. You don't need to make it yourself. And you can just play with this loop and do other things with it. Um, just by paying a small amount. Uh, but in general, if you want to support what I do here, Patreon is the best way to do that. You get three years of blend files, exclusive tutorials, etc. If this is something you're considering, I appreciate it. Even a dollar is amazing. And uh, other than that, I hope you enjoyed watching, and I will see you on the next one.